Good morning all. Another printed circuit board from JLC PCB. So let's take a look at what's in the box. And uh, yeah, this is my new printed circuit board. And what's the special feature of this one? It's not rectangular. Yeah, this one's been um, shaped a bit like a t-shirt. Now there's no particular reason why it's shaped like a t-shirt. It's just that I've got two chips up here which wouldn't really fit. So I built little sort of extension wings on the side. So what is this circuit board? Well, it's the Oink Display, binary and hexadecimal. Let's take a closer look. Yes, now this one I didn't uh, breadboard or test in any way before I designed it, but it's a digital circuit. So, well, what can really go wrong? It's also not um, sequential. It's all combinational static. So it should just work, and I'm going to actually uh, construct one of these today. So what have we got? Well, we've got a couple of um, binary to hex seven segment decoders, a couple of seven segment displays, which sit actually over the top of those chips. There's also um, a 10 segment LED bar graph, which is going to be my binary display. This is the hexadecimal display. There's a latch chip there, which I'm using as a buffer because I've tied the latch enable high. It's a transparent latch, the 573. And there's a general purpose eight pin connector at the bottom so that I can just plug it into my breadboard at any location and immediately see the binary and or hexadecimal, well, and hexadecimal. That's the logic of this thing. Um, data at the same time. That's what this thing does. So on the back, there is a ground plane with little spoked connectors into all my ground pins. And there's only one track other than that, and that's VCC, which just runs up to uh, these two chips. Uh, the displays, now they're common cathodes, so they're grounded on their common pins. It also runs up to the um, sill resistor pack. No, that's grounded as well. The common is grounded. That's right, because these are um, these segments are being sourced with current from this chip. So VCC needs to go to this chip here, which is the HC573. Now, I've never used one of these as a buffer, so it's going to be very interesting to see whether that works. Um, OK, so I think, uh, yes, actually, the other thing I wanted to say was all the interconnections are on the top. Now, I just want to compare this arrangement with these 14495s and the two seven segment LEDs with the way I've laid it out on my breadboard. And it's just so nice to get it all compacted into this little space. It takes up a lot of space on the breadboard. Let's have a look at that. So on my breadboard computer, um, this is where I've got the two 14495s, which are these two chips at the top of my board, and the two common cathode seven segment displays, which as I say, sit in front of those two chips. These displays have quite long pins, so um, I should have enough pin to uh, go down into the circuit board. And there's a spaghetti of wires from the eight bits on the top of this latch here. This is a 574. Now they're in binary order. So you've got um, bit, most significant bit on the left, bit seven, least significant bit on the right, bit zero. And that's how I've laid this board out. Well, I hope I have anyway. <laughs> So what I will do with these boards is just sit them uh, wherever I want to see the binary and hexadecimal data. So there, for example, I might put another one there or another one there, just wherever I've got eight bits in um, a logical arrangement with seven on the left, zero on the right. And then power to this thing is actually on a little two pin JST on the back. Uh, yeah, I've got a cable here. So you will just plug in the connector on the back there and then run the two wires down to a convenient five volt and zero volt point because I couldn't put connections down here because, well, it's kind of different each on each um, part of the circuit. I just wanted to pick up off the eight data bits and then power this thing entirely separately. So I want to get building one of these things right away. Well, I think I'll start with the JST connector uh, on the back because it sits here. The two pins emerge here and I'm just not quite sure how accessible that will be when I put these two uh, CMOS chips in. So yeah, I think I'll solder the JST on the back as the first thing. 
Now when I laid this board out, I laid the uh, positive and negative according to this bit of wire that I found. But of course these vary, don't they? Sometimes the positives on one side, sometimes on the other. But anyway, I've just done it according to that. I think I have anyway, yeah, because there's the little, the little um, spokes for the negative. So that will go that way round. Let's get that soldered. Just found me a little scrag end of solder here. So let's get that put on there. Right, that's on there. So now I need cutters to just cut these down as low as I can get them. The chips might fit either side of those pins. In fact, it's probably worth a check. I did have a dud one of these MC14495s, these binary to hex converters. So I think what I'm going to do, because I know these two work, because I've tested this, I'm going to pull them out of this breadboard and use these. I'm sure I've got 10 more somewhere, but I can't find them at the moment. So I'll put these in my PCB. Now they can't really go in sockets. Uh, well, they could, but then I'd have to put uh, the displays in sockets as well. I don't think I'll bother. I think I'll solder them straight into the board if they don't work. Well, they don't work. I've got 10 of these boards. Uh, then I'll get the displays in. I've got them somewhere as well. So let's hoik these chips out. And that's going to be slightly tricky because they're kind of buried in here. Uh, I'm not even sure I can get this chip puller in. In fact, it's almost not worth the bother, is it? I think I'll just use a screwdriver and some tweezers to sort of drift it through between all the wires and pull it out. Now, it's just occurred to me that I could partially build this uh, with the buffer and the LED display, the binary LED display, the bar graph, and just test the binary part of this before I test the hexadecimal part. Um, actually, I might get print out the uh, schematic for this so you can see how this has been done. But yeah, maybe I'll not actually put these in just now. And uh, yes, I haven't soldered these in, but they do fit in the board either side of the JST pin. So I don't think I'm going to need to crop those down. Those fit quite well. But as I say, I don't think I'm going to solder those in just yet. Oh, I've still got my blue tack on there from when I was soldering in the JST connector. Yeah, I'm going to fit this um, latch, which, as I say, is only being used as a buffer because it's a transparent latch. So it means when latch enable is high, the data just passes straight through. This also has an output enable uh, tri-state, but that's not being used either. So I think pin one, which is the output enable, is pulled low. Soon find out. Yes, it's got spokes, so it's on the ground plane. So this is permanently output enabled and permanently latch enabled. Um, so it's not a latch, it's just a pass-through buffer. And I might use more of these 573s as just pass-through buffers. Right, I need to find them. And yes, I did order some, and they're in here, so let's get those out. Okay, HC573s. Well, I thought these had gold-plated pins for a moment, but uh, no, they're just horribly tarnished. Something's got at them, so they might be a little bit tricky to solder. And uh, once again, I think I'm just going to solder this straight into the board. I don't think I'm going to bother with a socket. So let's just bend the pins down so that they're more in line, more vertical. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so the first chip goes into the board. That sits there. I'll probably put some right angle DuPonts in there. Then this should drive the LED bar. And if I put the uh, single in line resistor pack in there, then this should work as a binary display with a one CMOS um, load. This is why this buffer's in here, because I didn't want to load my uh, breadboard computer. I wanted it to present just one CMOS load. So let's solder it. Let's see how easy these tarnished pins are to solder. There's my ground pin. Oh, that's proving quite tricky. Maybe it's because this had just gone cold. I'll let it warm up a bit. Let's do the next pin. Oh yeah, that's working better. Oh yeah, these are working much better. Let's try that ground one again. It's these spokes. They just suck the heat out of the pin and put it onto the ground plane. I think anyone who puts a pin directly into the ground plane without spokes is giving themselves a lot of trouble. 
Actually, I'll do the other side in case the IC has started to fall. So, yeah, I would always put the spokes in. And in fact, I wish that uh, you could control the thickness of the spokes because I would happily have gone for thinner spokes, particularly in this design where not much current is being drawn. Well, I suppose it is driving eight LEDs. But uh, no, it seems you can't adjust the... Oh, this is another ground one. That's right, I think that's pin one, possibly, uh, which is the output enable, which is permanently pulled low. Well, here's the uh, schematic, which I said I'd print, but the print is pretty awful because the colours on this printer don't get used much, and so the heads all block up. But uh, here we have the binary input, 8 bits. Here's the buffer that just presents one load to the input. There's output enable pulled low to enable it. There's latch enable pulled high. I hope I've got this right. I did read the data sheet and it said if you want the data to be transparently pushed through the latch, in other words, not latched, tie latch enable high. <laughs> but I, as I said, I didn't um, breadboard this or test it in any way. Here's my power input connector, my JST. Here are my 10 LEDs, although I actually only drew nine of them. This one I've just sort of drawn connected nowhere because the outer two aren't used because I'm only using the middle eight. And the last one I couldn't be bothered to put in, so I didn't. Here are the two MC14495s, which are the four bit binary to seven segment hex decoders. And here are the displays. So yes, let's get some more parts in. I've got to think about this because I've got to get this lead bar in the right way round, all the anodes and cathodes. So the outputs of the 573 are active high, so they're going to connect to the anodes, I think, and then the cathodes will all go to the single inline resistor, uh, the common pin of which is connected to ground. So yes, these definitely need to be the anodes at the front. And I think I've got a red display here, which I've marked A. So I think the anodes are on the side with the printed part number, not on the rear side. I've marked that K. Well, let's hope I get this right. I'm pretty certain, therefore, that it goes that way round with the printed number to the bottom of the board. Right, let's get some bits of blue tack to hold that on the board. These pins are really long, so they're going to have to be cropped, but let's solder and crop those. Ah, yes, you can see that one of these LEDs, I've just run VCC right through the cathode and the anode of the LED, and that is actually on my schematic as well. And the only reason I did that was because I couldn't... Um, well, I didn't want to route that VCC out beyond the package because there wasn't quite enough room. And since I'm not using that end LED, I actually put in the schematic that it's got its cathode and its anode connected together, both going to VCC. But it was much more of a sort of a routing layout issue than anything to do with the circuit. Hmm, looks like the sun's coming out. Right, I need to crop off these uh, long pins, so let's... Start taking those off, and I don't want them to fly across the room, but they do stick to my cutters because my cutters are a bit magnetic. So it's all a bit of a fiddle, really. But uh, they are coming off. And all these little cut off pins, I will let's stick them to my finger and drop them in my little cut offs bowl. Now while I peel off this little cover um, that's on these, and I'm going to sharpie in the end ones. Actually I could do that now. Because these end two aren't going to do anything, I'm actually going to colour them black. Oh I should have done that. Looking a bit closer at what I'm doing, but it works quite well just covering the end two up. And then you get um, eight segments sort of nicely centered on the display. So I need a sill resistor. Now there aren't many values in here, so I think I'll go for the 470R. Uh, obviously five pins not going to be any good. I need one of these nine pin ones. 
So that's eight resistors all connected to a common pin. So that should work. And the common pin has a little dot to there. So you know, and there's a little marking on the uh, footprint as well. So if I put the dot where that little square is, then that should be the right way around. Now, if you're thinking, Julian, why on a breadboard computer have you got a printed circuit board? Well, this isn't really part of the computer, not a permanent part. I mean, it's more a sort of test rig so that I can take a latch or some sort of place where the eight bits of data are all in a row. I could do it there, for example, for the address going into these RAMs. And I can just plonk this in the circuit um, just to see the data that's at that particular point in the circuit. So this probably won't live in the board permanently. It's more of a tool, a test tool. Okay, I need a right angle uh, DuPont header to go on there so that the pins come out this way. And I need to make up my little power thing. I need to solder onto the other end of this uh, a two pin DuPont so that I can plug that into the breadboard to get power. Uh, so let's do all that. And then this should be ready to test just the binary bit of it. Here's a uh, right angled header piece. So I need to break off uh, eight, an eight away piece of that. Okay, that can be soldered into there. Now, I think I'm going to put it on the front because typically these uh, latch chips are going to be this way around with the bit I'm, I want to see, the output of the latch there at the top. So I don't want this pin header to be on the back and then find that the board is fouling against the chip. Well, there's not enough room to put it on the board. So yes, this needs to sit on the front. Anyway, it looks better on the front. And now to solder on the little two pin uh, DuPont for picking power out of the breadboard and putting it into the JST to plug it into the back of my board. So I've got a couple of bits of uh, heat shrink here. Let's just strip this back, solder it and do it. And uh, here's the old three hands at work to tin these wires and then I'll put the pin header in a breadboard and solder it all up. Yeah, I think my heat shrinks were a little bit on the big side because they haven't really closed up and shrunk around the pins properly. That's a nuisance, but I'll, I'll live with it for the moment. So the question is, will this uh, work? Well, I'm going to put it onto the output of this latch, which also goes to here. So we should see it twice. Oh, no, we won't because I haven't got the chips. And in fact, I pulled the chips out, didn't I? So we won't see that. But with this in here, these two pump pins are a bit big for that, really. Uh, now, the other thing, of course, is that it's sitting slightly high. Um, because of the edge of the board and also it's sitting on a, a VCC uh, link there so it's slightly squiffy but anyway that's kind of how it's meant to go now I need to uh, put power onto it so I'll just pick power off a convenient two pin point there and if I put power to this that should light up let's see if it works got my four AAs in here so that should give me five volts switch on ah yeah we've got something on the display what's that F0110 F6 now of course there's no program in here um, of any type so it's just going through two RAM addresses because they happen to have come up in that state but yeah certainly there's something on there now if I fit the two um, binary to hex decoders and put the hex display on there we should get the hex equivalent of that as well as the binary equivalent that's what this is intended to do right let's get soldering and yes the tie clip is working beautifully well here because the chips are next to the edge of the board so I can use the tie clip 
to solder these and I've just managed to clear the pins away from the JST so I should be able to solder those without melting the JST. Hmm. I do love using the tie clip to hold chips onto the board while I solder them from the back. Of course I only need to solder a few pins and then the tie clip can come off. In fact why don't I take it off now. Slip that off and my two MC14495s are sitting nice and flat to the board so I can get my seven segment displays on top of them. I'll just finish soldering those pins. So a little close up here of the HC573 driving the uh, binary 8-bit display. The single inline resistor is there. My two 14495s are soldered in there. And now the two seven segment displays sit on top of that. Um, I hope the pins reach. Let's find out. It's quite fiddly getting these two things to sit flat. Actually with them both in there, it's not too bad when there's only one in there. Oh, they're stuck together. But when there was only one in there, it was tending to fall inwards like that. But yeah, when they're both in there, they kind of sit side by side. I'm going to peel these sticky things off because it's sticking them together and that's a pain. I hope I've got the decimal point on the right corner. <laughs> ah, what fun. I'm pretty sure I have because I think that's the decimal point pin, that bottom right hand one and neither of those are connected to anything because I'm not using the decimal point. So I think we're good. Let's peel these sticky covers off because all that's happening is that they're just getting stuck to each other and have another go at trying to align these beautifully uh, before I solder them. So I think I've got those about as flat as I can. They're sitting, oh, they're slightly tipped forwards. Is that a problem? Probably not, but they're sitting right on top of these two chips. But they're lined up pretty well, so I don't really want to disturb them. I think I'll solder them in right there. And there it is, finished. My hexadecimal pair of digits, my binary display, the uh, buffer that presents just one gate's worth of load, all soldered together. Let's plug it in and I might even write a program to stick some numbers on it. There it is then, uh, plugged into the board, sitting on one of these latch outputs. Let's power it up, see what it does. It says FE, oh now it says 0, 0, oh now it says 0, 09. And yes, you can see that the uh, hexadecimal display mirrors, I don't quite know why it's doing this. Oh well anyway, that's quite interesting that it's flicking between 0, 0 and 0, 09. Seems to be picking up a bit of stray something. Actually one thing I didn't put on this board is any decoupling. But of course I can put decoupling locally on the breadboard. But yeah, that seems to be working. I need to put a program in now and I'm trying to remember how I do it. Let's put 5A on the display. So I think I need to go 50, uh, oh I can't remember how to do it now, 5001, I think this is number one, yeah one, uh, A001 and then go back round. I'll just key that in. That's it, it's programmed in, it's 5-0, that puts the, the literal 5 into the 0 register which is where I build literals. 0-1, uh, that copies this to here and then A-0 puts an A in there, 0-1 copies it to there. So if I free run that it just puts alternately 5A and A5 into my display and yes we can see it in both binary and hexadecimal. Well I think that's a result. And uh, another view of that and we can see the hexadecimal at the top and the binary below and we can read either or both. They're both saying the same thing. Quite a good way to learn your binary compared to the hexadecimal. 
sort of. So I think that's going to be a jolly good useful little module and I've got 10 of these if I want to build all 10. I'll need lots of these MC14495s and they're about $1.50 each. They're not cheap because they're new old stock, they're not manufacturing them anymore. Um, I thought I had a set of 10 somewhere but I'll, I'll have to have a rummage around. But yeah, so let's take that out. That just allows me to see in binary and hexadecimal uh, any 8-bit number, any 8-bit byte with the most significant on the left and the least significant on the right which is how I will always lay these latch chips out. But uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with my oink display. So a big thanks to JLC PCB for uh, manufacturing this rather awesome circuit board for my display. Uh, well, they manufactured it. I had to design it, of course. But that was, <laughs> that was fun. And uh, what I will do is I'll make this public so that if you do want to build one of these, not quite sure why you would, but yeah, I mean, if you're thinking of building a computer, something like this, this is a very handy tool to see the data in both binary and hexadecimal. So yeah, you might want to build this. So this will be made public. I'll put a link to uh, where this is on Easy EDA in the description below the video. So that's it. That's the Oink display binary and hexadecimal. That's all I'm going to do today. So cheerio.